I might have forgotten how to make a video. Shelly. If you have not seen this channel before, it is Chelly and Shelly, and I am the Shelly. The Chelly is currently busy. She is studying for her dental school admissions test, so if you pray, pray for her really hard. She's trying to make it out there. I took my med school admissions test um, a little over a month ago now. I'll probably talk about that eventually, but we have been on like a super hiatus for, I guess, about a year now because just the pre-med work got crazy and we just had to prioritize and readjust. So I apologize that we have neglected this channel, but we are back, well I am back, she's still studying. I am back because this week, well today, exactly, July 2nd is when you'll see this. I'm actually filming like, what's today? Today's June 3rd, 30th. <laughs> wow, I would be like super early if that was the case. But yeah, so today, July 2nd, when you're seeing this, a bunch of videos will have dropped from different Spelman YouTubers giving advice for the incoming class, which I guess you'll be 2022? Wow, I'm old. Um, so yeah, 2022, giving advice about Market Fridays and freshman year and Morehouse and basically anything you could even think to want to know and you might have not even thought of to want to know yet. But if you look through this channel, Chelsea and I have made quite a few videos <laughs> talking about things to expect freshman year and dorm life and frequently asked questions, etc., etc. So I'll make sure I link that playlist down below so you can kind of check it out and get our take on that information. But now you'll be having the perspectives of a bunch of other students who also attend the same school and have various opinions and experiences. I think it's really great to get more than just one opinion, more than just my opinion, more than just X, Y, and Z's opinion. So you'll have an array of different views and opinions from people who feel like they have something they're passionate about to say about that topic. So um, let's get started. So if you read the title of this video, which I'm not quite sure what it's gonna be yet, it's either gonna be things I wish I knew um, before I started college or eight lessons I've learned in college. Haven't quite decided. Honestly, I think wish I knew before might get a couple more clicks, but it's actually gonna be eight lessons I've learned since being in college. Please ignore that I'm missing two nails. I'm usually not like this. This is tragic. So the first lesson I learned, I would say first semester, freshman year, and I've probably talked a little bit about this on this channel, is that make to make friends that go deeper than current events. And this was something that I learned, one, through my own relationships, and two, through observing other people's relationships. It's kind of an ongoing joke that by homecoming your freshman year, your friend group will completely change. And oftentimes that's because people will come in and put on a brave face, put on this persona of who people want them to, to want, bleh, of who they want people to see them as, and they'll put on this thing, and they'll be great, and they'll be extra, and then life gets real and it's like midterms and after three months you have to just be yourself. So your friend group will change. You'll start to realize that the people that are maybe in the dorm with you are not the people that you're meant to be friends with. And maybe you'll discover that your roommate who you might not have gotten along with the first week is meant to be there for the long run. But my, my biggest piece of advice is to make sure that your friends are people that you honestly are looking out for your best interest, are looking out for who you are as a person, who want to get to know who you are as a person and not just want to talk about who's doing what, who's doing this, who's with that guy, who's with this guy, what is she wearing. Make sure your friendships are going deeper than that. Make sure they're intentional and they're people that are growing you to be who you want to be, not just commentating on what's going around you. I think especially as women, we're so, inclined to a we're so observant and we're so inclined to discuss feelings of other people discuss what's going on in people's lives and really dig in and analyze what's going on with them not necessarily from a place of malice just a place of genuine interest and maybe even with the heart to try to help that person but i think when your whole relationship with someone is about other people in four years when you graduate and you don't 
aren't necessarily in the same circles anymore, your friendships are gonna dissolve because you don't know who this person is. Or even if, say, your friend circle kind of shifts around a little bit, you're not in the same class, you're not in the same residence hall, is it the same people anymore, things change. So you need to be, I would say decisive with who, no, not decisive. I would say you need to be discerning with who you choose to let into your heart and let into your friendship circle link to that video. <laughs> All right, the second lesson I learned is that no one's gonna care if you don't do something. I will say that I'm, I don't suffer from FOMO as much as a lot of other people do, but the times I have suffered from FOMO and had to suck it up and not be a part of what other people are doing, I realized that no one noticed I wasn't there. Nobody cared that I wasn't there. Like maybe one or two people might check like, oh, I thought you were going to this thing. But nobody like genuinely cares if you're present at X party, if you're present at Market Friday, if you're present at blah, 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 blah. If you got something else to do, prioritize yourself over other people. They don't matter, honestly, in the wrong, in the long run. And they're not paying attention to you. <laughs> Okay, this third lesson is one that I'm still working on. Um, get help before you need it. I have always been like the smart girl who's been in like the advanced reading group since first grade and like never really had to study until I would say senior year of high school and even then it was for like one hard class. So I've never, this sounds bad, I never had to try <laughs> until college. And then when college hit and there was a class, it was general chemistry, I'll tell you that, it's hard. General chemistry is the hardest STEM class, in my personal opinion. Um, where I kind of felt that I might need a little help, but I was like, no, I'll just try harder. And it was like the worst grade I received in my entire college career. And looking back, I could have asked for help. There were like unlimited resources. Like there, what, sorry, I'm in a library if you see people walking behind me. There were like unlimited resources. There was uh, tutoring that was like available whenever I was available. There was another tutoring class. There were, te my teacher had office hours. Other teachers who I might've understood better had office hours. Literally, there's the internet. I had unlimited resources and I just didn't ask for help. I didn't seek out help. I just thought my own brain power would carry me through like it had in the past. And so I was so dependent on that that I did poorly because it just, it was beyond what I could naturally understand. And I needed to take time and take effort and get other people's help in order to do it successfully. So I know this is probably like a very general college advice tip, but please get help before you even need it. Like before, don't wait till you're like crying <laughs> on someone's bathroom floor the day before your final and there's nothing else that anyone can do. Like get help in the beginning. The fourth lesson I learned is something like looking back I think it's funny now but at the time it, it took a lot for me to learn this it is more important for you to find your purpose than it is to find your soulmate like your person will come whenever they come but you have only so much time to do the things that'll get you towards your purpose there's only so much time for you to do what you're supposed to do to get where you need to be does that make sense I think we all have this timeline. Well, maybe it's just me. I'll speak for myself. I have this timeline for how I wanted my life to go. And a lot of it was centered around things that are kind of, kind of silly, like not silly. Things that have been told to me that are, should be a part of a timeline. Like I was like, okay, this is when I'll graduate college. Maybe this is when I'll go to a grad school, but the important thing is this is when I'm gonna get married and this is when I'm probably gonna want to have kids or something along that line, you know? And I never really thought that maybe there was like something bigger I wanted to do. I just wanted the basic white picket fence, et cetera, et cetera kind of life. And that's fine if that's what you really want, but I would take time to dig into who you really are and what are things that you really desire. Cause you might surprise yourself and you might, be shocked at the things that your heart really desires that you didn't know about. 
for me, a lot of that transformation, which of what my desires were, didn't necessarily come from me getting hurt or heartbroken by some guy, but it came from me taking different taking 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 different risks that I wouldn't have taken in the past. Um, at the end of my sophomore year, I took a international CIE trip to Budapest, and literally before then, I'd never even like thought <laughs> about leaving the country. Like I felt it sounds so dumb now. But like the idea of going anywhere other than like the United States, maybe Canada and Mexico and like Jamaica where I'm from, like other than those places, like I didn't really think about going anywhere else. Like I was like, maybe I'll take a trip to the, some other island for like my honeymoon. Again, worrying about a man <laughs> when I could go there by myself. But like that trip just changed my perspective on a lot of things. It made me realize like there's other stuff I want to do rather than just get married or just graduate from college. Just, there was a lot of justs in my life, I suppose. And it was a big lesson that I have a bigger purpose than what other people around me have kind of told me I do. Does that make sense? I really hope that makes sense. I think I ask if things make sense in these videos and a lot because I'm talking to myself and I can't like see your face. Cause usually when you're talking to someone, they can like nod at you and like, you know what you're saying is going through. And I really, I think this is one that I really want you to understand. I really want to sink in because even if someone was telling me exactly what I'm telling you right now, three years ago, I probably would have just kind of nodded and been like, okay, yeah, but I'm, I still want to meet my husband. Maybe this is your dream and your purpose, but like God, God likes you. Like he doesn't just love you. Like he likes you. He wants you to do cool stuff. And I think, if you realize God has cool plans for you, like you'll want to up your game a little bit. Like he's got something better for me than what I want. And even if what you want is super cool, there's something better and it's coming. So get excited. So speaking of God, another big lesson that I learned was that God understands biochemistry. He understands molecular biology. He understands general chemistry. He understands film development. He understands cultural relations or uh, economics or whatever your major is. He like understands that, like he made it. Like, I don't think I put that together, but the, there was a semester where I just became very dependent on myself and wasn't spending time developing my faith wasn't spending time developing who I was spiritually and mentally. And when you're not in touch with who you are and you're not in touch with who God wants you to be, you end up very lost. And that semester I had by far the worst grades I'd ever had. I was not sleeping enough. My hair looked crazy. I think this was the, the semester we kind of decided we needed to take a pause on YouTube and reprioritize. And literally just things weren't going well because I wasn't taking time to recognize that it's not a waste of time to spend time with God. Like it's not a waste of time to sit down and read your Bible. It's not a waste of time to listen to a sermon. It's not a waste of time to meditate. It's not a waste of time to listen to a podcast. If it's what it takes for you to be who you're meant to be as a person. And when you take the time to do that, I promise you that you will, things will sink in better. Like. It will. <laughs> I don't even know how else to say that. Things will sink in better. You understand things better. You get more connected with what you're supposed to know. And because God made you and God made biochemistry, he will let you understand biochemistry. He has the capacity to put that knowledge in your brain that if you read the same line in the book over and over again without him, you might have not understood. And I wish I knew that going in because I would have taken a step back and depended on him and not depended on me because he is like 50 bazillion times smarter than me and I'm only one little human brain floating around. Yeah. All right, the next lesson I learned is that not everybody can do everything. This pertains to SGA. This pertains to internships. This pertains to grad school opportunities. 
But one of the biggest places it pertains to at Spelman and I think at HBCUs in general is with Greek life. One thing, because nobody talks about it, one thing that I didn't realize is that for some of these sororities, 500 to 600 students are trying to gain 30 to 50 positions. So even with the best odds, the longest line I've seen at Spelman was less than 50 people, so like say 49, and the say smallest amount of people trying to get these spots was 500. If you do the math on that, that is a less than 1% chance that you will be accepted on this line. So I don't see the point in spending three years compromising your character in order to gain one of these positions when in the long run, while yes, that is a lifetime commitment to that sorority, your character sets out your eternity. Your character says who you're gonna be throughout life and beyond it. You know, so no matter what, I still, I have a lot of respect for the meanings and the goals and the values that these institutions uphold. But in the long run, I say the biggest lesson I would say to anyone who's trying is to prioritize your character, prioritize who you are as a person beyond letters that you might obtain, beyond status that you might obtain, beyond anything else. Prioritize yourself and stay true to who you are as a person and have other goals. <laughs> have other things you want to do. That's it. I'll leave it at that. All right, the next lesson I learned is not directly related to college, but I think it's a good lesson to share anyways. It's that your gifts are important. The things that you are gifted with, no matter how small and kind of remedial they might seem to you, they are so, oh, I'm burping. Cute. They are so valuable in the long run beyond what you could possibly understand. Romans 12, six through eight, I'm gonna be reading this. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, it's service in proportion to our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes to his generosity, the one who leads to his zeal, the one who acts of mercy with cheerfulness. Cheerfulness. <laughs> the things you are gifted with are part of your purpose, are part of what you're meant to do in the long run. And oftentimes I felt myself getting jealous of people who had these gifts that were very easy to put on display these gifts that were very pageant worthy, these gifts that were on Instagram, gifts like beauty even, like things that looked like gifts that I could very easily identify in other people, I couldn't easily identify in myself. A lot of my strongest gifts are things like administration, organizing things, making sure I have everything in order, helping other people get things in order, um, being forgiving, being having patience with other people, being resilient in situations where most people are not very resilient. Things like that are not gifts that are easy to show in a talent show. I think it's very easy to get caught up in other people's talents other people's gifts, things that make other people special, and not take time to recognize what makes you special and what makes you valuable as a person. So it took me a long time. This was just in the past, I wanna say four months that I started learning that my gifts have meaning and purpose. Obviously we're getting to the end of the eight because these are one of my recent lessons I've learned. But that your gifts have value and they're gonna do a, a lot to MCAP I forgot how to talk. Those are not one of my gifts. So your gifts are gonna have a lot of value for you in the long run, and they're not necessarily gifts made to impress other people. Your gifts are there to help people. Your gifts are there to build up other people. So if you're using your gifts to impress people, they're not being used to their full capacity. If you're worried about your gifts not being cool enough, you're not living to your full capacity. You're not using what you're given to your full capacity. And this could be a whole nother video on purpose and gifts and let me know if you want me to talk more about it because I definitely can. But that will be my lesson. Take time to identify what your gifts really are. Even if you can sing a little like me, that might not be your gift, you know? Like the thing you're supposed to do, the thing you're, that's powering your purpose. Ooh, that's nice. Learn the things that are powering your purpose. 
Take time to identify the things that are gonna put power to pedal to the metal and power your purpose and gonna push you forward. Cause those are gonna be important and you need to work on developing them. Boom. So the last lesson I wanna share is more of an overarching lesson. It's that whether you stay in college for one semester or six years, who you are when you first walk onto that campus versus who you are when you last leave is gonna completely change and it's okay. You can, you're allowed to let go of what, who you thought you were when you walked in. You're allowed to transform, you're allowed to change. Your opinions are allowed to change. Your character is allowed to change. Things that you used to take pride in might be things that other people might tell you need to improve on and you might later realize you need to improve on. Um, for me, I'll give my example. I really pride myself on being a very honest person, but I have, Within even the last six months, found out that my honesty might not necessarily be very tactful. And who I am as a person, I don't want to be someone who's just tactless and unintentionally rude. And so who I am as a person has changed because of that. I have become more intentional with my words. I have analyzed what I'm saying. I've talked earlier in this video about how I felt my whole purpose in life changed. The person I was, if I talked to myself at my high school graduation versus talking to myself now that I'm a semester away from graduating, like we would have been on two completely different wavelengths. Like we would have, she would have been asking me about if I had a boyfriend and I don't know how long my hair had gotten and I'd be like, girl, this is what you gotta do. Like when's the last time you picked up the good book? Like I would have had so many different things to say to myself versus what the questions that I would have asked myself. And it's okay. Like I'm allowed to grow. I'm allowed to change as a person and you are too. So no matter who you are, okay, this is my last piece of advice. It's not really a lesson, but this is a piece of advice. I would say to write a letter to yourself beforehand. I would say ask yourself different questions. What are things that you would have wanted to ask yourself graduating? And write down some things about who you are as a person now. If you were to give a detailed description of who you are and things that you like about yourself, things you might dislike about yourself, things you'd want to improve, write those down, seal it up, and don't open it till you graduate. And I think it'd be really cool to see how you changed. I definitely did this. I wrote myself a letter and then I completely lost it. So I'm hoping I'll find it, but keep track of your letter. I think if you do that, and maybe if you look back on this video, you might have learned a lot of very similar lessons to me, but hopefully you'll learn them right now and you don't have to go through what I went through and you can be better, live better, Walmart, all that. And yeah, so that's the end of my video. I just want to say good luck. Have a great time. Enjoy your summer. Think about how long four years was for high school. College is just as long. You have just that amount of time to enjoy it. So enjoy right now and be present in your last real summer at home. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the video. I will be linking the all the other videos that dropped today for my Spelman sisters down below. Make sure you check those out. Get stuck in all the advice you can before you go out there and kick booty in the fall. Bang, 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 bang,